How are you all doing? And good evening, Zoomers. So I, I have, I want to raise the topic of the solar eclipse, which seems to have nothing to do with this evening, but I put a connection together. So before I start talking, I was wondering if anyone, I don't know if you can unmute um, Zoomers yet, but how did you feel? Where were you? Was it anything special to you? Anybody want to share? Jennifer, you want to share? Were you aware of it? I uh, I didn't participate this time around. I was acutely aware and I shielded myself. I actually, yeah, now seven years ago when it happened, I was also aware, I was also indoors. Um, I didn't observe it as much, but I kind of participated more. I was really protecting myself. Did you have an emotional reaction at all or any kind of? Um, I felt like everything else I feel right now, which is that it wasn't about jumping in. It was more about like witnessing in your own safe way. Okay, anyone else? Were you there? Were you? I don't know if what I'm saying is appropriate, but I didn't take it. I, I didn't understand the excitement, but then I was at home. But then I decided to watch on TV just to have the knowledge. And there was so much excitement. And of course, they showed in the eclipse here and there in different places. And um, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't understand what it was, all the excitement was about. Sorry. So how did the newscasters fill the time? Very excited. They, they were, all of them were very, very excited. And maybe they were right, maybe because they were there and they saw it, so. They were exuberant. They were filling time pretty well, right? Oh, look at that, look at that. And I turned on the TV also, because I happened to just get home around three, whatever. And uh, you look at the sky and it's just a white blob or clouds in a little bit. Personal? The hype, I mean, they had to do their jobs, right? Except, except that um, it reminded me that before this knowledge, my soul was eclipsed. That's what I thought of. And I kind of meditated on that. Yeah. So you really took your attitude and a spiritual place. You did. You were able to do that. Yes. Coming. Zoomers, you think now, okay? You have no voice, but you can think. Personally, I thought the earthquake was much more exciting than the, uh, uh, than the eclipse. I, I thought the eclipse was overhyped, um, but the earthquake was exciting, unexpected. No, it was exciting. Anyone else? Going, going. Michelle, welcome, Michelle, my uh, cohort. <laughs> um, Shanti, all it's it's funny. I, I I kind of agree with what you said, although meaning um, I thought it was a little overhyped. As someone who. Um, I, I will admit it, is watches probably a little more news than they should. And we talk about that every Thursday, but it's, that is my sanskar. Um, I felt this time that they're looking for a story, but at the same token, when I was home, because I, and, and in fact, it was so big that my office said that you can work from home. I'm in government and they never want you to work from home. And we got an email, stay home. 
because they were concerned about the safety. So I worked from home that day, but I was listening to the news. And what was amazing for me, I didn't, you know, wasn't that excited. I agree, the earthquake was exciting. Um, and I wasn't scared. I actually was excited by it too. Um, but what was incredible was the reactions of everyone else and watching how everyone was looking to share it together. And that was what was most notable to me is that people were hungering for something to share and this gave them something. So that speaks to the need of people for a united, something bigger than all of us. Okay, so that leads perfectly into my connection between tonight's theme and I did not put her up to it and I didn't pay her to say it. The connection for me. So I'm standing there looking at my little TV in the kitchen and I'm watching a Fox News 5 guy go, ah! and then someone, a woman said on TV that this is a wonderful moment that's uniting the whole planet. And now I'm going to confess. My first reaction was an old one. It wasn't very Brahmin. It was, yeah, that'll last about a minute. To shape the world. And I caught myself. And then I got distracted. But here's a coincidence that happens around here. The following morning, we have a morning class. <clears throat> and one of the senior sisters chose to talk for a second about the eclipse. And she was expressing what I didn't give my mind time to listen to my intellect to feel. Because it was a very unifying thing. It was. And I hope I have the words to express this. I've been talking a lot today. Um, we were unified. And it wasn't because we were scared. There was an ethereal kind of feeling. My kitchen turned half dark, even though it was here on Long Island. But I was transported also to a place of unity that I create inside myself. And that's where the house cleaning comes in. The theme for this month is really cleaning inside and out. And that's what Brother Eric is going to talk about tonight. But for me, when I was listening, and I could have taken credit for thinking it, but I didn't process, I'll be honest. But there was the coincidence of Sister Gayatri saying, you know, it's almost like a forerunner of what we should be like, the brotherhood, what may happen whenever the end, whatever, whatever happens on this planet, if you can perceive it with your five senses, it isn't real. But that feeling that I had, that you expressed, that you expressed, that feeling, it goes beyond a brotherhood to some, for me, to some power in the universe, whom we call more than God, Baba, perfect father, and mother nature and her perfection before we put a hole in the ozone layer and all that stuff. And the beauty and the orchestration and the good care we're under, no matter what, because here we learn that your soul is you, not your body. And that all that junk, the riffraff, the, the stuff that isn't real, we get to be our higher selves if we choose to change the attitude, which she expressed for me that morning, the following morning. So when Brother Eric says he's going, what? <laughs> he's going to talk about... Um, Spring cleaning is a ritual to make us feel new, alive, and ready for life. Process can be done outside and inside. Why do we like to feel clean, refreshed, and renewed, alive? Tonight, I'm sure through him, here he comes, we will discover the process for creating an outside, which reflects back, here's the part, the eclipse part, the inside longing, the inside longing of the soul to be fresh, to be clean, to be everything you said. Right? So let's have an hour. Brother Eric, the stage is yours. Thank you. And I never know what to expect. We never talk.
you know, before, but he's always, let me tell you a little bit before he totally gets comfortable. You know, he was a, I think, you know, he was a retired uh, civil engineer before, uh, I mean, he's retired now and he's been practicing Raja yoga for over 40 years. He is a very experienced, the most experienced uh, instructor and facilitator. And uh, he's also a representative to the UN and he's on the board of directors of the Long Island Multi-Faith Forum. Brother Eric, thank you. As I speak, the voice will increase and you will be able to hear. Can you hear now? Very good. Shanti. Um, it was quite amazing that as they were, um, I was outside in the backyard. I thought, well, if there's an eclipse, let me do this. It did get a little dimmer. But I also watched a little of it on the um, television. And it's amazing that you know, they talk about totality when the sun was there and it really gets get, really dark. But the picture of the moon in front of the sun in Mexico looked exactly like the picture of the moon in front of the sun in Texas. Looked exactly like the picture of the moon in front of the sun in New York. And looked exactly like the picture of the moon in front of the sun in Maine or Canada, whatever it was. So hats off to the individuals who have to talk about the same looking picture for, I don't know, eight hours, whatever it was. Look, there it is. So oh, there it is again. It's still up there. <laughs> so so it, it's quite a skill to say, okay, look at that black dot. Okay, are you experiencing anything? So we have a white dot that we look at and everybody was excited about the black dot. I don't know if there's some significance in that or anything that we should uh, think again about that. But uh, yeah, it was a interesting time. And I was actually here during the earthquake. And uh, we, if you've ever been here when some of these big trucks go by the, the building does have a shake to it and so i thought wow that's a really big truck uh, but it turned out it wasn't a truck at all <laughs> so um i'm gonna tell you a little personal um experience i have sometimes is that um i don't respond well to the smell of some of the cleaning fluids that are used in hospitals. And sometimes if it's too much here, um, it's just, you know, one of those things. So I'm not a big cleaner in that sense. So if you were looking tonight for household tips, um, you will be disappointed. However, I did think about spring cleaning and I uh, have a way of looking at things that to me is kind of a, a cleansing process. And I do it, um, I have a, a desk where I can help out do some things here at Harmony House. And um, I also like to go out in the backyard and uh, enjoy you know, an eclipse or an earthquake or you know, spring flowers, whatever's happening at the time. And I also have a, a, a residence. And I find that cleanliness one way isn't just making sure everything is, you know, uh, without any kind of germs or grease or whatever on it, but it is kind of the word that I want you to think about is in order. Okay. Because you could have a pile of stuff that's clean, but it's still a mess. It's still unorganized. It still wouldn't be a setup or an arrangement that brings harmony or peace. And that kind of a quality I want you to think about. That when I go outside, um, it's kind of a hodgepodge of stuff, but it is in kind of an order, a cleanliness. I mean, it's dirt. So how do you have you know, clean dirt? Think about that one if you want. Um, so you can't really have it 
hospital sterilized clean, but it has, if you can understand this concept, clean lines, okay? Have you ever, you can do this at home tonight over the weekend. Look at your walls and if, see if you have any pictures on them and see if they are in the arrangement that brings kind of balance and harmony and order. How many of you have ever kind of adjusted a picture because it wasn't in alignment, wasn't level, okay? And so I want you to think about the difference of those two um, situations and feelings, okay? Oh, look, that picture's crooked. How do you feel about that? What is wrong? What isn't appropriate for you? What, what is your inside telling you that the outside has to be? And then when you kind of adjust it, it's like, ah, there. How do you feel? And what's being activated by that? And th that sense of outside, um, I like to see the nature. So I go out and anything that is not a part of that gets picked up. We get people who um, think that somehow we might benefit by their empty Starbucks cup. We have individuals who think the, the wrappers from their candy on our yard might be uh, of some value. Um, there's a shopping center over here and I get to see some of the prescriptions and the uh, receipts that flow by and stuff like that. Those to me are not welcome. Okay. And if you find any on your way out, you're always welcome to put them in the trash. You can be a part of the pick up the paper team. Small group here. But we are very active to keep the grass and the property looking in a certain way. We try to clean it, kind of try to make it orderly so that your eye or my eye doesn't go to that. Does that make any sense? Have you ever seen something and your eye goes to the flaw? Okay. Um, happens regularly. You might see someone who's got um, their hair you know, sticking out, or they've got something on their back, their collar might be up, and they might have a, a great outfit. But if it's got a stain on it, or if it's got something there, it kind of catches your eye, and you get pulled to that. It's just because it doesn't fit in, it's not clean, it's not orderly, it's not, you know, without some sort of a flaw in that aspect. And so in the backyard, um, it's nice to go and have your eye pulled to what's there. Um, and this is a fabulous time, amazing time. How many of you get out every day and look at whatever's growing around you? Okay. Do it. It changes. The world is going through a transformation now. It's very exciting. Um, different flowers, different blossoms, different buds, different shades of green or you know, it's just just amazing if you observe that. But if it isn't clean, if it isn't orderly, if there's all sorts of other stuff, you won't see that. You'll see the flaws. You'll see the paper. You'll see the bottle. You'll see whatever is in the way. And so I like to be outside and be able to have it the way it is, whatever it is. We got all sorts of odd stuff out in the backyard. I can consider it special sometimes. I'll give you on a tour. Um, but it kind of fits in. And so it doesn't distract. And so when there's that cleanliness of the space, not necessarily the cleanliness of the things, but there isn't anything that distracts. And therefore, there's kind of a, a harmony and a wholeness. You can enter into that space and feel that it's in order. It's got that cleanliness feeling to it. There isn't anything that's going to pull your attention. I try to do the same thing where, where I work. There's lots of pieces of paper. There's lots of um, things that can be distracting. 
And then if you look at that, I don't know if any of you uh, work a lot at a desk, um, but sometimes when it is not, not dusty clean, but orderly clean, is that difference making some sense? Okay. Um, it, it's very confusing for me and distracting. I need to do this and this is here and this is what I've got. And so I, I need to put some order to it so that that will reflect how I want to think. Okay. I can't think about all this stuff at the same time. So I have to kind of make a list and I have to kind of get files and so that let me work on this thing right now. Everything else is clean and tidy, undone. It's, I didn't, you know, uh, spick and span the piece of paper that has the letter that I need to respond to. Okay, that's that type of clean, isn't it? But it is there so that I know what I have to deal with and it's in its place. And when I come to it, it'll be the right time. But if it's not kind of in order, and this is me, okay? Um, other people can, you know, operate in however they want to. There's not a right or wrong. But just bringing out that fact that what is the order? And order is more of um, a place and arrangement rather than a dictate or a uh, command. But what's the order that helps as we arrange it outside that can reflect or activate the qualities that we want for ourselves inside. Um, and home, um, you know, there's that sense of cleaning and you'll get cleaning tips from others this month, I hope, possibly. But the arrangement of things, is that so that when you walk in, you see chaos possibly or is there a place where you can go where distractions are gone where when you sit you automatically have created a space that is clean from external elements that might distract you and take your thoughts elsewhere okay and that's why you know for example here at harmony house we have the the, the simple, and I'm going to say clean lines behind me, focal, simple, easy, and therefore it kind of helps us concentrate and focus and get into a, a clean space, a natural space, an original space, a spiritual space. And that when we start to have that um, kind of orderly, it is also... Um, the framework where we can start to get in touch with our natural inner qualities. When I'm in the backyard and things are, you know, the paper's all picked up and, you know, things are kind of in alignment, there's a feeling that emerges. There's the possibility and the opportunity to just kind of be in that quiet. It's not just the backyard. It's in lots of places. Um, but it's nature's order. It is the way that the space has been created so that there aren't things that will pull your intellect, your attention. And so it's easier to concentrate. And it's easier to let go. And for me, it's easier just to be in the space. Don't have to think. Don't have to talk. Don't have to worry too much about anything. It's just be. And when I describe being, that's a state where natural qualities of the soul emerge. It's quiet. It's calm. It's peaceful. I wouldn't say it's uh, exuberantly joyful, but there's a happiness. And there isn't a, a need. And what I find is that when I can go into a clean, orderly kind of space that's you know, arranged in a way that feels comfortable, that automatically allows me to feel and access what we would call, what I would call our natural qualities. And so it's easy meditation, it's easy remembrance, it's easy just being. 
And because it gets so good sometimes, everything else disappears. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to think. I can just walk around. And then eventually I look at my to-do list and says, yeah, right. That's something else. But the outside really does affect me. Okay. And if you change pictures and if you, you know, move magazines around, one of the easiest ways to um, get into that space is to say, I want a room. I want a corner. I want something where when I sit there, it is clean and it's going to remind me of the thoughts that I want to reinforce. Meditation room, a little place, chair. Uh, there's no magazines around. There's no TV around. It's whatever might be there to spark and trigger those thoughts. That's a clean space for me tonight. It shouldn't be dusty and dirty and messy and, and such like that. But the clean lines, clean space. Because when we have that, then we can start to experience the spiritual experiences of the self. I'm the soul. I'm seeing, you know, an orderly place. I'm seeing the clean lines in that sense. And that's activating and bringing up something for myself. And so there's a cleanliness in order when we talk about place. But as I was thinking about order, there's another definition I want to bring in that's important also. Um, doing things at the right time, in the right order. And how that can be beneficial. Um, when I do things outside, I'm not always planning on what I'm going to do. But I find that if I take the rock that I pick up that somehow doesn't belong here in this direction, then when I'm in this direction, I can come back with something else. So I'm not, I'm doing two things in one trip. Right? Um, and so kind of planning and being economical and energy. Um, and, and so having things done in the right order is very cleansing because you're saving time, you're saving energy. And one of the aspects that has benefited me is the order of my day, how I do things at certain times. And it's not uh, a limitation. You have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. But when we do things kind of in an orderly fashion, it is very beneficial because it's effective, it's economical, we save time. And actually, we don't have to think so much. Don't have to worry so much. And that frees up a lot of energy, and therefore you can uh, just use that in some other beneficial way. But the order of my day is comes kind of from guidance that I've received here. And I like starting my day in silence. After I wake up, I wake up. Because when it's quiet in the morning, like having that space with those clean lines and things not distracting, there's not a lot of distractions at that time of the morning, early morning. And so we're able to have that awareness, have that thinking, have that remembrance. And that's a big part of... Um, what I find beneficial in my life. Do I have some time to think the thoughts that I want and pull in the uh, thoughts that will help me in connecting to my true self? One of the, the main things I learned here is I'm a soul, I have a body. I have qualities of peace and love, happiness. Uh, there's others like me, like you, we're kind of similar, we're spiritual. And so when I think of myself as an eternal being of peace, simple thoughts. But to hold that, in that silence, in the morning, brings 
that energy, brings that power, brings that feeling, brings that sense that I've already attained something. And to attain something by five o'clock in the morning saying, hey, this is going to be a great day. It's a really wonderful feeling. I've cleaned the space around me. It's nice and orderly. And now I can do things in an order that will help me through the day. Start with a remembrance, thinking about myself, thinking about God, thinking about my qualities, thinking about how that is and going into that experience and kind of wallow or relish what's going on. And then, I actually like to have a cup of coffee, something like that, get set, you know, um, because I feel that I'm on top of the day. I don't know if you know that difference of waking up late and saying, oh my gosh, and then you're rushing, you're always feeling you're behind during the day, as opposed to, okay, I'll be on time, it'll be okay, let me do things orderly, let me kind of do that process, and there's an easiness. I know the difference very well. Oh, you know, and I don't like looking at my watch. Is it going to be there? Where's the train? What's this? What's happening? Get a little excited about that. So I try to remove that from my life by being on time, being orderly. And then I find what's been beneficial is to listen to something that I can think about during the day. And uh, I come to a class here in the morning. I come to listen to um, what we call uh, early class. And it is something that's spiritually beneficial for me. And so, in a way, following the order of the day, I clean my mind, get rid of thoughts early morning. And then that makes it available for something new, fresh to come in. Another new, clean thought for the day. And I hope you're on um, the Harmony House mailing list, because I think if you're on one of our mailing lists, I'm not sure who's there, there's thought for the day. There might be a flower, there might be something, a picture, whatever it is. Um, but that type of um, a process of listening and thinking about something clean and new and fresh in the morning. And if you can, whether you read something or listen to something or attend something, um, make room for that. Because if you do that in the morning, that feeling that's generated, that experience that's generated um, is spiritual power. And you can use that then as you think, because if you think, that's a cleaning process. I'm thinking about you know, how contentment feels and how I should share contentment, for example. And if I'm thinking of that, I'm kind of moving some energy around and nothing else can enter into that. It kind of gets bumped out. There's no, no space for worry, thinking about late train, what's going to happen, is the eclipse going to blind me, uh, whatever it else your mind might go towards. And so having something for in the morning, in that order, clean the mind, put something fresh, new in there, use that during the day. And then that just automatically kind of helps us in creating the, the feeling, the atmosphere, the relationships that we, may, we might want. It's much different than having something at the end of the day, you know, um, where it's like, oh, that's a good thought, and then not being able to use it. And so early in the morning to have some sort of inspiration, some sort of thought, it's fresher. You can use that. Now, I'm going to contradict myself saying having something at night is the beginning of the day. Whatever you do at the end of the day is what you take to sleep with you. You have in your mind and you go to sleep with that and you'll wake up with that energy. And so our day, your day, my day, a day starts before you go to sleep. New day starts at that time. Think about that. 
it's not the end of the day. Yes, it is. But it is also the beginning of a new day. This is how I want to be. And so a little cleaning of the mind at the end of the day. What do I want to think? How do I want to be? What are the thoughts? If I had something in the morning, let me remember that again. Let me reinforce that. Let me go into the experience. Let me bless myself. Let me support myself with that thought. This is something that will, you know, I will kind of treasure as I go to sleep and then I'll have that uh, energy with me. Typically, um, it will support a um, sound sleep. There's lots of other situations going on about sleep and stuff, but supposedly and generally that would be the case. And then you would wake up kind of with that feeling fresh ready to think about it again, ready to think about something else. And so the order that we do things, clean our mind in the morning, add something to it, and during the day, then that becomes available for us. There's a lot about, you know, what is happening outside, um, kind of triggers what goes on inside and vice versa. What's going on inside uh, reflects on how you see what's going on outside. And so if you are unhappy or concerned about something and worried about it, you're going to see that. And our, our world is very um, much offering that type of perspective. This is how you should see this event. This is what's going on. This is what's happened. And um, half the people will say, oh, this is great. And half the people will say, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> whatever, it's, whatever, whatever the situation is, you can always find a different perspective on that. And so if you want to create something, want to have a uh, beneficial, optimistic, uh, powerful, you know, spiritual awareness and sustain that, um, this is what we have to do. We have to create something around which will allow us to feel something, and we need to take that and treasure that inside and sustain that. Order outside creates order inside, and in that order, when we do things in a proper beneficial order, uh, you know, then it, it will stay with us. And just kind of flipping those two in, uh, morning examples for me. If I don't concentrate and kind of clean out, um, I'm kind of like putting something fresh into something old, okay? Um, pitcher of milk was sitting there, they, it's kind of gotten spoiled. Okay, the best thing to do is probably dump it out, clean it up, and put fresh in. That's the order that would be most beneficial. If you don't do it in that right order, what are you gonna do? Oh, here's the milk, I don't have time to clean it. Let me put the new in. Now what happened to everything? It's got jumbled up. It's not clean. It's not so good. It doesn't taste. It's not going to be the same. So doing things in order helps us achieve what we might want to do. And I'm just highlighting that kind of morning routine that I have that helps me um, prepare for the day. How do I want to be? What do I want to share with individuals? What is the qualities that I might have? And I don't always know. But if I listen to um, something beneficial, words or thoughts or class or whatever it's going to be, then I'm always surprised by, oh, that's interesting. Let me hold on to that thought. That was public. Let me think about that. And actually, that's one of the reasons um, we often have, usually have, try to have all the time, um, a blessing, a little card, because it helps us to focus. And those blessings have inspirations, have power, and in a way, have cleaning ability. They allow us to clean our minds by putting something else in and knocking something else out. We have all sorts of things and Somebody gives you something that's nice, and all of a sudden you're thinking of that, you're looking at that, feeling that, and this other stuff is kind of moved a little farther away. 
So the more that we can read, the more we can think, the more we can clean our mind with what we bring in, it will create something and we'll want to bring that out. We'll want to share that. And that's actually one of the topics, subjects, um, is how do you use what you've got? Okay. And, you know, what is the point of cleaning your home? Really? Think about that. Um, is it because that makes you feel good? That's typically fine. Is it that you would like others to have the experience when they come over that they would feel good? And so part of it is that we want to do something for ourselves, but we also like to share that. Okay, I fix things up. Um, I have a good feeling about it, and so why don't you come on over and you know share that same feeling? You know, there's all sorts of different ways that you can revamp that kind of process. Um, but it is something that when we have attained something, there's kind of an automatic wanting to share it. And so if you clean the mind in the morning, reflect on who you are, go into a soul conscious, peaceful state, and take something and add that on, automatically you're going to have something that you're going to want to share. You're going to want to have that, and you will have something. That's a very difficult feeling if you've ever had that. And I hope this is a new description of something for you. Um, but you are kind of in a situation where you'd like to help somebody, but you don't know how, you don't have skills to do that. So you're kind of feeling inadequate or bad or noticing the lack of ability to help. Anybody ever had that feeling? Maybe not. Good. Um, and so it's always good to have something, kind word, something to say, smile, however it's going to be. And so just wanted to, I guess, um, activate two thoughts about cleanliness through that sense of orderliness. When we have this space clean, there's benefit for us, easy to think. And when we start to do things in an order, and I only spoke a little on uh, my morning in that sense, uh, there's benefit in that also. And there's reasons why we should do things in the right way. And so hoping that you will think about these things and be able to create the space, create the way you like to do things that will always give you a reflection of the qualities that you want to be experiencing. You create something, it will come back to you. You will have that. You will have that with others. And um, you never know. If you have that order, it might be sufficient to create the same effect as a lunar eclipse on the world. You never know. So we can see how that works out. So I'm going to pause here and see if there's any thoughts in the room or out of the room. And if we have a microphone, then yes, uh, we do. Let's see how that works. Out. First, thank you so much. Uh, before anyone shares, I have one silly question, Brother Eric. Were you peeking last week when I adjusted Rama Baba's picture? No, no. It had been bothering me for okay. so many weeks. Why did it bother you? Because it's Brahma Baba. Okay, yeah. He looked like this. Okay, but why does a picture need to be straight for you? Well, I always assumed all my life it was just some neurotic thing, you know, needing this yeah. order. But you've convinced me tonight that it's it's stabilized. It's, it's universal, typically. It really is, but I have a much better example. Very sure. quick. <clears throat> also silly. When I was teaching, I had also been studying the Gestalt uh, technique how children learn to speak. And some children learn like holistic phrases, sentences, and some are typically taught vocabulary and they put the words together. So as a joke, I went into the classroom and I have a very long Italian last name, Montalbano. And it was the first day of school. And I write 
M-O-N-T-A-L-B-A-N. And I left it alone and I walked away. It took about, without exaggeration, seven minutes for a student, I can't take it anymore. And he ran up and he put the O at the end of my name. It was that disconcerting. So when you talk about how, use the phrase, and I, I, I've just been uh, focusing on it the whole hour here, um, nothing pulls my attention. If I'm free of stuff like that, those are silly extremes, but if I'm free of that, then I'm able to put my attention where I want it. It's just amazing. And that's really what we try to do with the meditation. As far as, is anyone uh, on Zoom? Narayan, are they able to unmute? Or anyone here want to say anything? Uh, yes, they can. Okay. They were very chatty last week. Um, just while we're waiting, um, you talk about an inspirational thought and then putting it into action. Um, and I'm sitting here thinking, do I have an example of that? And very quickly, I do. Um, I was tutoring this afternoon and I stayed a little extra and the student was getting it. And um, I realized that my goal has changed as I've been here. And my goal is to be aware of how the student feels when they learn something. And not in a phony way, not, but in a very honest way to make sure I stop talking, which I do pretty well. <laughs> it doesn't stop sometimes. But to stop and notice how the other person is receiving and what they need to encourage them to move forward. So that's really something where we take away, we have power and we've learned about the powers here. We have power to shift into what's going on for them and how can I inspire in some way? And it works especially well with teenagers, if your parents are teaching them. Okay, anybody, anybody want to? Thoughts or inspirations, how you order your life. Clean. Anybody on Zoom? Let's see. Just Narayan. <clears throat> Michelle. Um, I, thank you very much, Brother Eric. It was excellent. I wanted to talk about thoughts and cleaning that. Is that part of it? Because, for example, there are certain things that weigh heavy on me, especially in the workplace, where there's something going on with someone that I have to I hate to use the word confront because it's not really a confrontation, but they're doing something that, you know, needs like the picture fixing. And oftentimes that thought of, oh, I have to deal, you know, I have to deal with this. I have to tell this person. It'll hang with me for days and it puts my whole, I'm not as functional. And in terms of dealing with it, putting that in order. Is that part of that too? Like how we um, associate with others when things are out of alignment with them, yeah. that you have to put it in alignment. And then, and I felt that way once I finally pulled off the bend and I said, you know, we really got to talk about this. You have to try this and let's try this and I'll help you. I flew out of the room afterwards and it wasn't, it wasn't confrontational. I tried not, and the person didn't feel it was. And after that, the day like flew. It was wonderful. So Good. how things can yeah. weigh you down in interactions it's too. It's a great word that fits into uh, clean lines is alignment. And um, anything that's out of alignment, back, foot, you know, uh, electrical wires um, don't work the same way. And so there's something in nature that kind of wants it to be aligned. To have it, you know, so that um, I've had the opportunity to walk through uh, a variety of buildings. And uh, when the internet was being created, I'm checking it. Yeah. When the internet is being created, they would run wires. Um, and then they'd have to upgrade things. And oftentimes they would just abandon something and then do it again. And then they would do it again. And so some places 
it was just a mess. You had no idea what you were looking at. Was it active? How you could find it? Um, and it just had you had a real bad feeling. Okay, if anything ever went wrong, where does the wire go? Which one is this? Why did you know? But there were other places where you know everything was in order. You could see, and it was so easy to figure out what they had done because you know it was aligned, it was in order, it was clean, it was visible, it was easy. And then the difference of the the places, um, you know, it was this place wasn't worth removing it. Probably not a bad decision, but over time, those decisions just made it real chaotic. Um, I don't know if you've got uh, anything like that where the, the wires are there, but that alignment and that cleanliness and that order, it just wasn't there. And it just, uh, it was like kind of glad I don't have to sort out all these things here. We might have um, a little pop quiz, I guess. Um, do you have a closet or a drawer that is um, not quite as orderly as some of the others? Yeah. Most people, it's like, I don't know what to do with this. Well, I'll just put it here. Uh, like, <laughs> kind of close it and hide it and <laughs> no, I've got it, but it's, it's just, you know, um, and the, the feeling of, you know, having things in order, um, both here at Harmony House, because I've been here a lot, and, um, and at home, because it's in an order, and because I know that, um, I don't need lights. I, I, I just know, and uh, I can reach for something in the kitchen and it's there. And it, it's just I, on my desk and I know where things are. Um, and so having that just makes it a little more easy and a little more peaceful. Um, rather than searching for something all the time. I don't know if you've ever lost anything or misplaced something or can't find it. But the energy and the worry and the anxiety that comes from something like that. So uh, alignment, order. Just kind of having that um, connection to the space around you actually does, for me, bring a lot of contentment, peace, and easiness. Speaking of contentment and peace, yeah. would you like to guide us? In if the... we're okay. Yeah. We'll finish up with just a little reflection then. There was a... Uh, commentary that was uh, longer than usual and it's from 6 30 to 7 we're always going to have some meditation some music and some voice with that so well, you can uh, participate in in that time but um, whenever you show up it's great so i want to thank everybody for coming i wasn't sure how the weather was going to do but you are all brave and courageous and powerful and right now you're dry so uh, take a deep breath and want you to see if you can follow along. So we're at a Global Harmony House. The backyard is dark and probably a little wet. But I want you to go home. Sitting here, but take your spiritual self and walk through your home and see the order that you've created. So look at your walls and notice that all the pictures are straight. And there's a harmony with that. There's an alignment. And that brings peace. Brings calmness. Brings an order. And now find a comfortable chair. You might be able to sit there shortly, soon, physically. But as you sit in the chair in your home, have that awareness that things around me, I've created a space, and the way I've ordered them, the way I've positioned them, reflects the qualities that I want to experience internally. I have a peaceful space at home and I feel peace.
There's nothing that pulls my attention when I'm in this space in my home. It's calm, it's clean. And I have the thoughts and inspiration. I'm blessed, I'm fortunate, I'm lucky. And I hold on to those feelings. Take those feelings to sleep with me tomorrow morning, early. I will reflect again as I awake, as I sit in my comfortable reflection chair. I to align my thinking to my truth that I am a spiritual being and my nature is peace. So tonight and tomorrow, occupy your mind with how I will share the peace with those in my life. Peaceful night, have a peaceful sleep, have a peaceful tomorrow. See you soon again. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. And before you go, Zoomers, I want to just announce that uh, we have a beginner's Raj Yoga course uh, here at Harmony House. It's in person only, and it's 6.30 to 7.30. Is that correct? It started in person, this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we've had three classes already. Ah, uh, do you want new people? Um, new people are always wonderful. Um, it's in person only. Um, give a call here sometime tomorrow if um, you have missed the first week and would like to we'll catch, uh, you up. catch up. Right. And next week, I don't know how many of you remember pre-COVID. I guess Sister Rona is uh, over at Manhattan Center. She heads Manhattan yeah. Center, and she will be our guest in person yeah. next Thursday. And that's her actual name, Rona. It isn't shortened for Corona. <laughs> oh. Corona. Is it an eclipse? Yeah, it's an eclipse. Okay. The eclipse. All right. So also, thank you all for being here, for coming, and Brother Eric, as always. I never know what to expect, and he never disappoints, right? Okay. Om Shanti, we have Tolian Blessing for you on the way out. Om Shanti.